If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everybody, welcome back to The Frugal Filmmaker. You know, one of the most popular accessories you can get for your camera and DIY rigs is the Universal Quick Release System. These allow you to move your camera from rig to rig easily and quickly, and the inexpensive versions cost only about $10. However, because they are so popular, they often run out of stock quickly on Amazon and eBay, and sometimes it takes months for them to get more stock. So I thought, what would be a good way to build a DIY quick release system that's inexpensive and uses parts that are almost always readily available? Well, I came up with one, and it only costs $3. Now any quick release system is going to have two parts. You've got your base, which is what you attach to your camera rig via your quarter 20 threads here. Then you've got your plate. This attaches to the bottom of your camera via these threads. Then when you want to, you put the two things together, lock them in place. When you're done, you can easily remove them. Now the frugal fast release operates in exactly the same manner. Okay, now these are the most common quick release systems you can find on the internet as far as uh, being inexpensive goes. This is the Manfrotto 323 RC2 clone. This is the SEMA Quick Connect. I made several videos about both of these in the past. You can check the links in the description below for those. Uh, the problem with these, even though they're good, is that they are often unavailable because they sell out so fast. So I needed to come up with an alternative. And this is the unit I decided to replace the bases with. This is a, a flash bracket, a cold shoe. Uh, mount that will uh, go on to any kind of rig or the top of a light stand or whatever the quarter 20 threads on the bottom You may recognize this from when I built my frugal stabilizer too. These are the exact same mounts I'm using for accessories on the top of that rig uh, And I decided well this might be a good idea for a quick release system because uh, These are really sturdy uh, The only thing I needed to come up with next was uh, some kind of plate that I could slide into here and originally I was going to use, you know, the, the, these little adapters that are made to slide into a, uh, a cold shoe mount right here that fits really tight. And uh, you've got this nut here that I thought, I thought well, I could just uh, put this whole thing to the, you know, the tripod mount on the bottom of a camera. Uh, but the problem is, is that these threads are so, so shallow, uh, you're going to have this part kind of sticking way out. And even this uh, adjustable nut on the top here that you can screw against the camera body is not going to keep this thing in place and it easily spins and just doesn't work. So I had to get rid of this idea. And that's when I decided to use something really, really simple. Uh, this is just a uh, 3 8 inch washer um, and it slides right into that cold shoe mount as you can see there. Uh, plus it has a universal shape so I didn't have to worry about what position it was in the bottom of the camera. I just had to find a way to get this to on the bottom of the camera. Uh, and I did that just simply kind of the same way the uh, other base plates are. I mean they've got you know kind of a spongy material and a screw and uh, then you just you know screw that plate right into the bottom of your camera. And I was going to do the same thing only I'm going to use a uh, this is a quarter inch tapered screw right here and then I've got a grommet, a rubber grommet also. So what I did was I took the washer and I took a countersink bit and I kind of reamed out the top of the washer here so the tapered screw would fit better into it. And if you're wondering about the, uh, the countersink bit, it's what I used when I made the trolley dolly and I'll leave a link. You can get them at Harbor Freight Tools. You get a set of three for like four dollars at any hardware store. Uh, but they uh, do the job of kind of grinding out the metal here so that uh, this will fit better and give you a lower profile, like so, like so. But now you're going to need some kind of padding or uh, some kind of absorbing material on top here so you can, when you attach this to your camera, uh, it's going to act as kind of like a uh, lock washer. It's going to press up against the camera and not unscrew by itself. And that's, uh, let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to put this on the bottom of my Sony. So there you go, the uh, rubber grommet compresses and the washer, you know, the thread stops actually, but because of that the pressure applied by that uh, rubber grommet, it's not gonna, not gonna come unscrewed anytime soon. And it's got a really low profile. So you almost notice, don't even notice it at all. Uh, it's pretty small. And uh, then it's gonna go, like I said, right inside of this base unit. But let's go ahead and attach this base unit onto something so I can show you how this whole thing works. Okay, so here's the Frugal Stabilizer 2. I'm shooting pretty tight here just so you can kind of see what's going on. 
and we're going to take this uh, the frugal fast release base unit right here and notice how the accessory shoes on top here are the open end is facing away from the operator uh, but all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the base unit because this is friction based and there is going to be an open end I'm going to put the open end facing the operator instead of facing away like the accessory shoes okay so now the base unit is attached to the stabilizer as you can see the uh, open end is pointed toward me the operator while the accessory shoes are pointed away the open end is pointed away and now I'm just going to take my camera which still has the uh, plate attached to the bottom like that and I'm just going to apply force and shove it right onto the cold shoe adapter just going to slide in until it stops and butts up against the front of it and uh, as you can see there it's attached and uh, nothing except you is going to be able to get that camera off of there unless somebody runs into it or you hit the front of it but notice uh, again like the open end is facing you because typically when you're using a stabilizer like this and you're at rest or whatever you're going to be pointing down uh, at the ground and because the open end is facing up it's not going to fall out that way uh, it's not going to fall out anyway. I mean, it's in there pretty snug. Uh, now, there is no locking mechanism like there is, you know, on one of these. It's not going to snap into place. It's held in there by friction, but it is held in there very, very tightly, and it's not going to come out until you literally force it out and move it to your next camera rig. Disclaimer, disclaimer, okay, I know some of you are watching this and thinking, what? You want me to trust my camera on a $2 a uh, flash bracket, and a washer. Well, I realize this does look pretty petite, but it is pretty sturdy. That washer is not gonna come off of your camera because of the pressure generated by that grommet and the screw. And that little cold shoe mount is mostly metal, especially the friction parts and the threads on the bottom, and it's pretty strong. I've used this with my NEX5N and it works good. The thing you have to remember though, this is really a system for smaller cameras. If you've got a camera like mine or a camcorder, or a flip style camera or a smartphone camera, I think this system will work great. I think it'll also work well on a Canon T2i sized camera, such as that one or a Panasonic GH2. It should be good when you start moving up into larger cameras, such as a Canon 7D or a 5D Mark II or three, or cameras of that size, uh, ENG style camcorders that are big prosumer cameras. This system really isn't the best for that. I recommend you get one of the other ones, the Manfrotto 323 clone, or the SEMA Quick Connect, you can find those links down below. However, they are often very tough to find because once they run out of stock, you don't see any of those uh, quick releases for a long, long time. So this is a good alternative, again, if you have a, a smaller camera. But please, please, please be careful. I don't want anything happening to your camera. Uh, just like any other rig you build from this channel, use your best judgment, be careful, use, you know, follow the rules, and you will be fine. Thanks for watching. And I came up with using a washer based system because this washer uh, will then fit inside of this very easily. And we're just going to loosen. You know, this is all meaningless. <laughs>